Hello, my name is Neto Rosatelli and welcome to the Cataract Surgery Channel. This commented surgery is on a case of severe IOL dislocation where IOL repositioning and optic capture is done with minimal manipulation ensuring a very good result. This patient presented four months after uneventful surgery with history of blunt ocular trauma 30 days after surgery and blurred vision since then. IOL dislocation was evident upon examination and IOL repositioning was scheduled. So let's analyze the situation to make a proper surgical plan to correct it. The red line traces the posterior capsule opening border and the yellow line the capsular axis border. We can see that the two capsules are fused together and presenting an ovalized center opening through which the IOL is inserted, half of its body on the anterior chamber and the other half located in the vitreous space. We can immediately assess that there is very good capsular support and maybe the same IOL can be used and repositioned in the sulcus. Being that a single piece acrylic hydrophilic lens, I will comment on that later. Two paracentesis are made with 1.2 mm sapphire stab knife at 2 and 9 o'clock to gain anterior chamber access. The patient is under peribubular block and intracameral 0.5% lidocaine is injected to ensure a good anesthesia. I can immediately notice that there seems to be no vitreous in the anterior chamber, a very good sign indicating that the anterior hyaloid may not be ruptured. After that, dispersive OVD is carefully injected forming a wave to completely fill the anterior chamber ensuring good endothelial protection and providing space to safely maneuver the IOL. With help of a Lester hook I then probe the IOL and begin to maneuver it to bring it back to the anterior chamber and I am horrified to notice how precariously it was hanging in that position. It confirms my suspicion of anterior hyaloid integrity as it remained in that position without falling to the vitreous cavity because it was resting on the anterior hyaloid face. After pulling out one of the haptics back to the anterior chamber I can see that the oval aperture of the capsules can easily be used to capture the IOL through its haptics. If successful, this would make for an excellent correction of the situation. I rotate the IOL to position the remaining posterior prolapsed haptic in one of the aperture ends at 12 o'clock and proceed to prolapse and capture the opposing haptic. While holding the IOL with the Lester hook, I use a short chopper to nudge the intended haptic downward into capture and succeed. Judging the IOL situation satisfactory, I proceed to position the temporal haptic in the sulcus and finish IOL positioning. I can see that the IOL is firmly secured in this captured situation. There are six variations of IOL optic capturing, this one being with captured haptics posterior to the capsular bag and IOL capture through the capsular membrane opening. Satisfied, I begin to carry out OVD evacuation with a bimanual irrigation aspiration probe. OVD evacuation must be thoroughly done in order to avoid IOP spike in the post-op period 
and I carefully aspirate and irrigate the angle and the sulcus all around. By tapping the IOL capsular bag complex, I confirm its stability. Very good choice of action. Carbacol 0.01% is injected to achieve meiosis. It will help to evaluate IOL centration. It's been widely observed that hydrophilic IOLs are well tolerated in the sulcus, especially when secured by optic capturing, contrary to single-piece hydrophobic ones. I begin to hydrate the incisions while I wait for the carbacol to act, as I want a stable and filled anterior chamber to judge IOL position. A final BSS anterior chamber lavage is done to evacuate the remaining OVD and take out the carbacol in order to avoid systemic effects. The eye is pressurized and things are looking good. I'm showing now the capsule aperture borders stretched by the captured IOL with the cannula, but let's do better. Let's analyze the achieved IOL situation and assess if its centration is adequate. Here we can see that the whole IOL optic and two of its four haptics are over the anterior capsule. The red line highlights the posterior capsule aperture, which, in conjunction with the yellow highlighted capsular axis opening, is capturing the two remaining opposing haptics in the 6 and 12 o'clock positions, indicated by the two arrows. Now let's see about the IOL centration. By using the 6 mm IOL optics as a gauge, we can measure things there. Pupil contour is highlighted also. By simulating a 5 mm pupil, we can see that the optic is fully covered. That's probably the maximum pupil size this elderly patient will have in scotopic conditions. Even an unlikely 6 mm pupil will ensue only a small area uncovered by the IOL. I find the result very satisfactory, as with minimal manipulation, a secured IOL position with an adequate centration was achieved with no need of IOL exchange or fixation. Of particular interest in this case is that this is a 4 haptic IOL, achieving outstanding stability when captured. Search Neto Rosatelli on YouTube or click on the link below and visit my other channel with cataract phaco clips. Please like, share, subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.